In this video, I want to show you the basics of how to work with the mock-up feature in Adobe Illustrator, and then I want to move on to some tips that can help you for working with your patterns in mock-up. So to begin, here's how this feature works. You need to have an image. It can be embedded or linked, and then some vector art. You'll just place that vector art over the image, and it's important that the top art is vector. This does not work if the top art is an image. And then you'll select both, and you can go to the menu. This is the object menu, and there's mockup and create mockup. Or if you have your contextual taskbar open, we can see there's a button here to create a mockup because it's sensed that I have an image and vector art selected. And this button is new in the beta for 2025 and something we should see in the general release too. So I'm just going to click on the button here and it's going to take just a little time for Illustrator to map out the surfaces in this image. And now we have a mockup with our artwork and the circle and handles around it that allows us to you know, drag it around and find where we want to place it. And it can even move on to other surfaces here in the image. It's pretty cool. And then if we want to scale this flower, we can hold the shift key to keep the proportions constrained. And we can also rotate. Another change that we can make while we're inside of the mockup is to change the transparency. So I'm going up to the top control bar to opacity, and I'm going to change this to a multiply blending mode so that it blends better into this pillow in the background and we can see a little bit of the shadows coming through. The blending mode you choose is really going to depend on, you know, the background art and the foreground art. So this is something you can play with to find the best combination for your art. There's also a mock-up panel that's now opened. You can find this in the window menu right down here under mock-up and it's showing us other items with that artwork on it. And these are photos that you can get from Adobe stock. And if you want to see one, you can just click on place on canvas and then it gives you that image. I'm going to delete this because I don't want to work with this one right now, but you do have that option. But for now, I'm going to close the panel and let's look at editing the mockup. So when I select it, we can look over in the top control bar and see that the object we have selected is a mockup. And there are buttons here that are going to let us do different things. Same here on the contextual taskbar. And we have this release button. If I tap this, I get back to square one where I just have separate vector art and an image. I'll go ahead and undo that. And you may have noticed what we have here with this little plus sign here. This art inside the mockup is actually a symbol. And I can see that if I go over to the symbols panel and there it is right there. This is just created for us automatically. So to get inside of this mockup to edit the content, I need to double click. Once you're inside, you can select the art and you'll see again, the circle with the handles that let you scale and rotate and reposition this. And now if I want to edit the artwork or the symbol, I would double click again. And this takes us into symbol editing mode where I'm getting a pop-up here that's just telling me that this symbol will be updated across my artwork if it was appearing in any other artwork here. So I'm going to click OK. And from here, I have the individual groups that I can work with, resizing, just making any of the usual edits that you make. When you're inside of symbol editing mode and maybe you start adding you know, more artwork here, I'm just using a brush here. These things are going to be added to that symbol. So if I exit here, which I can do by clicking on this little exit arrow, or I can just tap the escape key on my keyboard, that art is now a part of that symbol and we can see it here in the symbol thumbnail. Another way to edit symbols in Illustrator is just to double click on the symbol itself in the panel. So I can select these brush strokes and delete them. And then I can tap escape to exit symbol editing mode. Now I've got my mock-up. And again, if I want to edit the content to get back to the circle with the handles on it, I can do that. So it's good to understand the different levels of editing, whether we're inside the mock-up editing the contents, or we could be all the way into editing the symbol. And here I can just double click away to get back to the mock-up object. 
Now let's look at what we can do when you have a pattern fill that you wanna use for your mock-ups. So in outline mode, we can see this is a pattern fill swatch. And if I place this, let's put it over the photo. And then to create the mock-up, I'll just click on the button and we'll see what happens here when we use a pattern fill. There's a lot of artwork in Illustrator that probably needs to be expanded before you can use it in mock-up. And we're actually getting a warning here for this. Mockup currently lacks support for raster artwork effects and certain types of art. So what we're seeing here is something, it, it looks like it's working, but if I want to move this around, it's giving, there's a line there, it's giving me some problems, it's taking more time. It's just not working probably as it should. So you can kind of get it to work, but depending on how complex it is, it might not work all that well. And then I'm seeing a little bit of, of flaws in here. So what I'm going to do first is just release this and then show you how you can expand this art to make it better for mock-up. I'm gonna close the panel here and set this art off to the side and get out of this editing mode here by just tapping the escape key. And then to expand this pattern fill swatch, I'll go up to the object menu and choose expand. Now, if you're working with a pattern fill that has a separate background fill, so you've stacked up multiple fills in the appearance panel, then you probably will need to choose expand appearance first. So I just wanted to point that out. If you've got multiple fills, you may need to take an extra step here. But since I've just got everything in one fill, I'm gonna go to expand. Fill is already checked for me, I'll click okay. And now let's look at this in outline mode. And you can see there's tons of extra art. So everything outside, you know, of that main rectangle there is in a clipping mask. And we don't want Illustrator to choke on all of this extra artwork here. So let's simplify this by going over to uh, the Pathfinder panel right here, and I'm gonna choose Merge. What Merge does is it just merges anything that is touching that is the same color. So that will probably create fewer shapes in here. And then it's also going to simultaneously crop out all this extra art here. Also, if your art contains strokes, expand those first because Merge and some of these other pathfinders will remove the strokes. So I'm just gonna tap on Merge and it looks like it's done. Now, if I look at this in outline mode, I don't see any of that extra artwork there. And just know that this is a destructive edit. So where I had, you know, Paisley's stacked up one shape on top of the other, now we have cookie cutter. So if I just double click to isolate this and get in here, you can see all of these cookie cutter shapes. Let me undo that. So that's fine though, because for our purposes here, we just want something that's gonna be easier for mock-up to work with and something that is truly expanded. So now what I can do is place this over the photo and then select both, click on create mock-up. And I think what we'll have here is something that's gonna be easier to work with. And we're not gonna get that warning like we got last time. All right, so it's working great. Let me go ahead and add that multiply blending mode there. And then, you know, I can move this around and position it however I want to. So you might wanna expand your pattern fills before you add them to mock-up. Now I have some tips for choosing an image to use in your mock-up. And for this example here, I'm using one of the included images on the mock-up panel. And what Illustrator does to this is it maps out the surface. So here where we see the arm, it's actually not going to differentiate between the part of the arm that has a sleeve on it and the part that doesn't. So we can see this when I move that art over, it just covers the whole arm. So this is something worth considering, of course, when you're working with a pattern like this, it's got to cover a lot of area. You might want to choose long sleeves or even a garment that is not on a body, but maybe on a, on a solid background. And of course, since we have a dark background here, I won't be able to see any shadows coming through this unless I use transparency. And of course, with a dark background, multiply is not gonna work for us here, but you can play around with some of these other blending modes like hard light or maybe difference to find something that's gonna work better for this. It's definitely more limited when you're using a dark background. So a photo like this is probably a better choice.
the object itself is white and it's pretty clear the difference between the object and the background, even though the color is white everywhere. So I'm just going to put this pattern back and create a mock-up from this and we'll see that it just does a better job right away. So I'll move this into place a little bit more. I'm probably going to have to enlarge this to cover all of the area of the scarf. So it's pretty clear where the edges are. And then I can come over here and add that multiply blending mode to pick up the shadows. Now here I have an example of a garment that's going to work better because I don't have other surfaces of the body in here to deal with. And I can drag this up and see how the pattern starts to cover some of the straps, but not really all that well. And it's also, you know, not perfectly covering all the way to the edges. So, you know, this is not a perfect solution. It doesn't replace Photoshop, but it certainly does this really quickly. And so if you pick the right photograph, you can have a really pretty good mock-up in a very short amount of time. You can also add multiple objects to a single mock-up. Let me back out of here and let's see, I have one right here. One way to do this is to use the layers panel. I just find this to be maybe even a little easier. So if I come in here to the layers panel, we can see I've got everything in this file on one layer, but here is the mock-up that I'm currently working on. And when you look at it, it's called mock-up, that one object. And then it has the symbol, which is the pattern that I have here. And then it has the photo, the dress. So a quick way to add this Paisley to the mock-up is just to take this group here that is the Paisley and drag it inside of the mock-up. Then I'm going to double click on the mock-up to go into that editing mode. And there's my Paisley. Now we can see it's in the mock-up. It's got that circle around it. And then I can add it here. Let's go ahead and make that multiply blending mode. I'll shrink it down a little bit rotate it and it's automatically become a new symbol. So once you want to do something a little bit more complex with your mockups, it's great to open up the layers panel and just work on it like this. And that may make it easier to select and work with the different objects. All right. Well, I hope you've gotten some good tips out of this video. My name is Laura Coyle. I teach Adobe Illustrator here on YouTube and in my online learning community. Find out more at my website, lauracoilcreative.com, and be sure to join my email list. You'll receive a welcome gift and helpful Illustrator tips delivered right to your inbox. And thanks for watching.